Hi and welcome to Outline of Pathology. Today we will discuss another hemodynamic disorder that is thrombosis. Thrombosis is a bit worse topic to be packed in a single video. So what I will do is divide the topic into two videos. In this first part, we will discuss the introduction and pathophysiology of thrombosis. And in the next video, we will discuss the types, morphology and fate of thrombosis. Okay, so let's see what is thrombosis. Thrombosis is the formation of solid mass and circulation from the constituents of flowing blood. So it is formation of solid mass and circulation from the constituents of flowing blood. You have to note two things here. One, it is process of formation of solid mass in circulation. And number two, the, the solid mass is formed from the constituents of blood itself, not from extraneous substances. It is formed from the constituents of blood itself. As far as formation of solid mass is concerned, it is similar to or shares the same process as blood clotting but there is a major difference between two blood clotting is the one which occurs when there is some vascular injury and this blood clotting is life-saving because it prevents loss of blood through that injury on the other hand thrombosis is one which occurs in unruptured vessel and this one the blood clot or thrombosis which occurs in the unruptured vessel can be life threatening second thing to notice this solid mass is formed from the constituents of flowing blood itself okay not from some extraneous substance the blockage sometimes happens due to extraneous substance also and there is embolism which by the way will be our next topic but our today's topic that is thrombosis is something which forms from the constituents or regular normal constituents of the blood itself and as i told you this is life threatening and this is life threatening because it can cause two things number one ischemic injury and number two thromboembolism ischemic injury i am sure you are already thorough with we discussed that in our cell injury video so this thrombosis can cause ischemia or infarction of some organ or tissue another thing it can cause is thromboembolism thromboembolism is thrombus thrombus is the name given to the solid mass formed the process is called thrombosis and the mass formed is called thrombus okay. so thromboembolism is the thrombus or part of it getting dislodged carried along in the bloodstream and lodging in some distant vessel blocking that vessel okay that is called thromboembolism so this thromboembolism and ischemic injury these two are the two life-threatening harmful effects of thrombosis coming to pathophysiology Virko described three primary events which predispose to thrombus formation the so-called famous Virchow's triad are 1. Endothelial injury 2. Altered blood flow and 3. Hypercoagulability of blood To these primary events are added two processes which follow these Those are activation of platelets and activation of clotting system So total 5 factors come into play endothelial injury, altered blood flow, hypercoagulability of blood, activation of platelets and activation of clotting system. Let's see each of these factors in detail. First one is endothelial injury. Endothelium or intact endothelium has both antithrombotic and prothrombotic functions. The antithrombotic functions are 
it protects the flowing blood from the thrombogenic influence of subendothelium. The subendothelium is thrombogenic, that is, it promotes formation of thrombus. Okay. So, this endothelium is the main factor which protects the flowing blood from the thrombogenic influence of subendothelium. It also elaborates some antithrombotic factors like heparin like substance which accelerates the action of antithrombin 3 and inactivates some other clotting factors. Thrombomodulin which converts thrombin or modifies thrombin into activator of protein C which is a potent anticoagulant. It also elaborates inhibitors of platelet aggregation like ADPS, PGI2, etc. It also elaborates tissue plasminogen activator which accelerates fibrinolytic activity. Coming to the prothrombotic functions that is thrombosis favoring functions, it releases prothrombotic factors like thromboplastin, von Willebrand factor, platelet activating factor, inhibitor of plasminogen activator, etc. So, our endothelium has both antithrombotic and prothrombotic functions and there exists a delicate balance between these two in normal condition. When there is endothelial injury, this balance is disturbed and this endothelial injury exposes the subendothelium which is thrombogenic as I discussed. So, vascular injury is thrombogenic. But what are the factors which cause this vascular injury? Vascular injury can be caused by factors like or conditions like myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction produces or causes endocardial injury. Vascular injury can also be caused by ulcerated plaques which occur in atherosclerosis, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, some harmful chemicals in cigarette smoke, all these also can cause vascular injury. Coming to the next factor that is alteration in blood flow. I think we already saw this once on our class on inflammation. In that class we already saw what is axial flow, what is stasis, how the flow of different components of the blood changes during stasis, all those. Now we will just brush up that. The normal flow of blood is called axial flow. In axial flow, the central stream of the blood is the fastest and the peripheral stream is the slowest. The central fastest or rapid central stream carries leukocytes, red cells. The slow laminar stream or the intermediate stream carries platelets and the most slowest peripheral stream carries cell free plasma. This is comparable to the flow of a river. In rivers, what happens? The central stream is fastest compared to the peripheral stream and it is the central stream which carries heavier objects. Yes, when the river slows down, what happens? The objects which were previously moving in the central stream move towards the side and stagnate. You must have seen that. Yes, the flow of the blood is also comparable to that. The normal flow of the blood is, as I said, axial flow. It consists of a central stream which is the fastest carrying leukocytes red cells, the laminar stream which is adjacent to it and it carries the platelets and the slowest one is the peripheral most stream and it carries cell free plasma. This axial flow is disturbed in conditions of stasis and turbulence. Stasis as we have already seen once refers to slowing down. Stasis is slowing down. In stasis, what happens? As we saw in our example of river, when the river slows down, heavier objects which were previously moving in the central stream moves towards the periphery and gets stagnated or deposited in the river banks. Yes, the same way in stasis of blood also, margination and pavementing of the leukocytes and platelets occur.
and stasis mostly leads to venous thrombi. Turbulence, on the other hand, can directly cause endothelial injury and can lead to arterial and cardiac thrombi. Coming to the third factor, that is hypercoagulability of blood, there are certain conditions which can lead to hypercoagulability of blood and these are broadly categorized as hereditary and acquired causes. The hereditary causes include conditions like deficiency of antithrombin 3, deficiency of protein C and S which are anticoagulants, mutation in factor 5, defects in fibrinolysis, increased level of coagulation factors like factor 2 and factor 8, all these things. Acquired causes include risk factors like age, smoking, immobilization, that is the limbs and plaster casts, etc. It also includes predisposing conditions like heart disease, vascular diseases, tissue damage, and anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome. Anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome, that is APLA commonly termed APLA is a condition which predisposes the individual to recurrent thrombosis. There are two types of APLA, lupus anticoagulant antibody and anticardiolipin antibody. Both of these can be predisposing to thrombosis. Coming to the role of platelets in thrombosis, following endothelial injury, the platelets come to play a major role both in the normal blood clotting and also the life-threatening abnormal condition called this thrombosis. Now let's see the sequence of events which follow the endothelial injury from the viewpoint of platelets. Okay. As soon as endothelial injury occurs, the first thing that happens is platelet adhesion. The glycoprotein receptors on the platelets recognize the site of endothelial injury and these platelets adhere to the exposed subendothelial extracellular matrix. Von Willebrand factor, which is synthesized by the endothelial cells, also plays a major role in this. They help to form a firm adhesion. The next step is platelet release reaction. The platelets activated in the previous step now undergo platelet release reaction. That is, the platelet granules are released. Two types of granules are released, dense bodies and alpha granules. The release of dense bodies liberates substances like ADP, adenosine diphosphate, ionic calcium, 5-HT, which is called serotonin, histamine, epinephrine, etc. On the other hand, alpha granules release liberates fibrinogen, fibronectin, PDGF, platelet-derived growth factor, platelet factor 4, thrombospondin, etc. This platelet release reaction is followed by platelet aggregation. The ADP which is released in the previous step is a potent platelet aggregating agent and this causes aggregation of additional platelets and this aggregation of platelets produces a temporary hemostatic plug. Coming to the role of coagulation system, coagulation which you must have already learned in physiology is the process of conversion of soluble plasma fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin. You must have already come across the famous intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway and common pathway of the coagulation system. I am sure you must have learned all this in physiology. But I am also sure you must have forgot that as fast as you learned. Yes. So let me brush it up once more. The intrinsic pathway of coagulation opens with contact with any abnormal surface. Here in endothelial injury, the subendothelial extracellular matrix is exposed, and this starts the intrinsic pathway. Contact with this abnormal surface leads to activation of factor 12. The activated factor 12 starts a cascade of activations. It activates factor 11 to 11A, 9 to 9A and this 9A along with ionic calcium and platelet factor 3 activates 10 to 10A. 
which is the starting point of common pathway. We will come to this in a short while. In extrinsic pathway, the extrinsic pathway starts with the release of thromboplastin, otherwise called tissue factor, from the damaged tissues. This tissue factor on interaction with factor 7 activates factor 10 to 10A. So both our intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway meet at this common point that is factor 10 getting activated to factor 10A and from here the common pathway starts. Factor 10A forms a complex with factor 5A and platelet factor 3 and this complex in the presence of calcium activates prothrombin to form thrombin. This thrombin converts the soluble fibrinogen to fibrin, that is monomeric fibrin. Initially, the fibrin is formed in its monomeric form, which is later on converted to polymerized insoluble fibrin with the help of activated factor 13. So, this is the coagulation cascade. Here we should also see the regulation of coagulation system. The coagulation system is regulated by protease inhibitors. These protease inhibitors like antithrombin 3, protein C etc. act on various coagulation factors so as to oppose the formation of thrombin. Another system which regulates the coagulation system is fibrinolytic system. Here, plasmin, a potent fibrinolytic enzyme, is formed by the action of plasminogen activator on plasminogen, which is present in the plasma. You can see that here, the plasminogen present in the plasma is activated by plasminogen activator to form plasmin. And this plasmin is a potent fibrinolytic agent which degrades fibrin. Okay, so we have discussed all the five factors which take part in the formation of thrombus. What are they? The original three Virchow's triad, that is the endothelial injury, altered blood flow and conditions of hypercoagulability of blood, along with the following two processes, activation of platelets and activation of clotting system. In our next video, we will discuss the types, morphology and fate of the thrombus so formed. As usual, I have provided PDF notes in the description. For the continuation of this class in our next video and for more videos, don't forget to keep the channel subscribed. Until we meet our next video, thanks for watching. Bye.